Welcome to the Music Journal Podcast, where we talk about the hottest things happening in music right now, and also how you can apply it if you're an aspiring producer or musician yourself. I'm your host, Wes Yi. I'm a producer, artist, and educator, and I'm stoked to be chatting with you. Let's make history. Welcome to another episode of the Music Journal Podcast. Today we have Sharon Nicholson. And Sharon is a DJ, he's a director, an actor, and believe it or not, also a stuntman. Um, And it's not every day you meet someone with as many talents as Sharon. We actually met at an event a couple weeks ago where I gave my very first talk, and uh, I knew I had to get him on the show. He was a stunt double in Law & Order. He's DJed all across the globe from New York City to the biggest clubs in Paris. And now he currently owns his own event company called Nicholson Events, where he books and manages everything from DJs and MCs to live bands, all the way to magicians and mentalists as well. And they really go above and beyond for their clients. And if the stars happen to align, there's a chance you could even possibly see me perform at one of your events, if you call Nicholson Events, to help you create an unforgettable experience. So, Sharon, thank you for joining me on the Music Journal podcast today, man. Thank you for having me on, Wes. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of my uh, description of who you are and what you do, but obviously you're you. So if you want to kind of fill in some of the gaps, fill in some of the blanks. and uh, Before before I fill in gaps, you, you mentioned that we met when you did your very first uh, uh, public speaking. We did. And your energy and you were awesome. So I have to say that uh, uh, it, that you're awesome and it, that's what motivated me and made me want to be on your podcast even more. Oh, thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. Yes. Vice versa too, by the way. So, so to fill in the, in the blanks, you know, um, I love to create. And um, I think when you're a creator, much like you, uh, you just, what, what else can I create with? What else can I do? So, um, DJing, I started as a dancer, so dancing was probably one of my first expressions of creativity. And then from that moved into DJing. So now I'm, my paintbrush becomes the music and I'm brushing the dance floor and the body's moving on my paint. Right. Mm. And then from that, um, like how else can I express myself? I went into some acting and, um, I did some um, some Krav Maga and that got me uh, and some crazy driving and that got me to doing some stunt work. <laughs> and then I've also picked up a camera and done uh, uh, fashion editorial photography and also um, got to work with some re- some great musicians to direct some music videos and um, always looking for new ways to create. And, and it was great to be, and the best part about it is you're around people that like to create as well. So totally. it's just a, a, an incredible environment uh, to be in when you're in an environment of creativity. There's a, uh, there's a quote that I heard kind of recently. Um, it goes, uh, the earth without art is just eh. Yeah. <laughs> the A-R-T out of the earth. Yep. Uh, I love the imagery you kind of portrayed when you were describing all that too, um, talking about like brushing on the dance floor and that's your, your paintbrush. How'd you get into the whole dance thing? Um, I know it was like pretty hip at some point in time, right? Were you break dancing and kind of got engulfed in like hip hop culture and that's how you became a DJ from that or? Well, much like Bruno Mars, much like Bruno Mars, I'm going to compare myself to Bruno Mars. Right. (laughs) Elvis Presley was probably my, introduction to dancing mm. that as a very very young boy my parents would, like i loved elvis presley and my parents would have me at every occasion do my elvis presley impersonation oh we got to hear and, it now no no dancing wise i used oh, to imitate okay. him dancing <laughs> <laughs> that makes more sense but um i did sing at one point and one of my tracks was one of elvis presley's songs uh, lucky penny but that's mm. another life but <laughs> Um, uh, so I started dancing. I was always dancing rhythms in you. I think, um, if you have rhythm, uh, you just have to, to move. It just flows through you. So mm-hmm. I was always dancing, dancing, dancing. And then of course the eighties hit and break dancing started. So as a teenager in the eighties, uh, I just took to break dancing and was, a started, um, as a hip hop dancer, uh, in the event industry. So I was, I was always a motivational dancer and, mm. um, 
you know, got to do some, some stuff performing, but always more as a, as a freestyle hip hop dancer at events. And then that's what got me into the event world. Gotcha. That makes total sense. Glad you kind of filled in some of those blanks. I think it's kind of wild how um, your career and just life have taken so many different avenues. Uh, like you've gone down a lot of different paths and kind of gotten your feet wet in a lot of different things. Um, do you have a favorite just between stunt work and acting and uh, well, the, the, the stunt, the stunt work was, was such a, you know, people love hearing like saying stunt work, stunt man, because it is a glamorous thing. Mm. Um, but I did that for such a brief stint and very lightly. I was very lucky to know the right people that, that let me do a couple of things, but to call myself a full fledged stunt man would, would not be, would not be honest. <laughs> I got to do some stunt work and I got paid for it, which is great. Um, and I got to do some acting, which was great, but my, my, my passion and what I love doing is, is the event world and, and creating these amazing events and being part of all these amazing events. And I, I just, I still love DJing and yeah. I love it. Uh, I was up at a, I was up in Maine to do an after party for this, this bride and groom rented out a whole camp up in Maine. And we went from, uh, 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. as if it was a New York City club just mm. out of control yeah and it's so great when you have a crowd that likes to dance and I find that that today dancing and and clubs has kind of parted ways that clubs mm. now are more about I got my table and I got my bottle and everyone's oh, yeah. kind of sitting around and just bopping up and down yeah like showing off and stuff like that yeah when it's clubs used to be about let's go hear this DJ. And there's still some places like that, but totally. it used to be everywhere at parties, people would want to come and dance. Mm. And I, I miss those days. So when we do get a crowd like that, where, where they want to dance, I love DJ. DJ mm. is awesome. And I love doing photo shoots because I get to, uh, you know, have some beautiful models and beautiful people or, <laughs> or really cool Always stuff in front of me to shoot. Yep. Um, First of all, don't sell yourself short on uh, on the stuntman thing, um, even though you were <laughs> doing it full time. I mean, the fact that you even got a couple gigs is pretty dope. Um, Thank you. And everybody can be like a Jackie Chan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, why do you think it is that uh, the dance culture and club culture have kind of migrated away from each other? Because um, I feel like the younger generation, like I have two younger sisters, and one of them is 17. And I feel like all of the 17 to like 19, 20 year olds who aren't really able to go to clubs yet because um, they're not 21, but all of them are doing all these like weird trap dances and like flossing or whatever. And they all have some sort of new hip trend. Uh, I wonder, I wonder what it is about people like my age, I'm 24 or like 22 to like 25 that makes dancing kind of not as hip. Do you have any thoughts on that? I have a lot of thoughts. First might be that everyone has a phone and if you do any kind of weird move, even before you hit clubs, mm -hmm. it's going to go viral online. So, oh, yeah. you know, so maybe that's one thing I, I notice when we do some parties now for, and there's younger kids, everyone whips out their phone the minute one kid is dancing and oh, wow. there's no more that let yourself go on the dance floor because everyone's going to be documenting it. Mm -hmm. um, that's one. I think in the club scene, the fact that clubs realized, hey, we can make so much money by selling bottles. Oh, wow. And they've yeah. marketed it as like a show off thing. Right. That's what going to a club is, is let me show how much money I can spend mm. versus let's go listen to this DJ and there's going to be other dancers there. And let's, you know, let's see who's got, you know, let's go see, let's go dance and let loose. Um, I think that's left our culture. And maybe the fact that you know, you don't see music videos anymore. You don't, maybe, you know, you don't see it as much. Like the last one that I can think was like, watch me whip. Uh, you know, and there's some, there's some dances, like you said, trap and all that. But I've noticed also that there's a, a very short attention span when it comes to dancing and music. Totally. So if at events, and I, I'll, I'll say kids anywhere from, because we do a lot of events, we do a lot of bar mitzvahs and stuff like that where they'll come out and dance a chorus and then leave the dance floor if we play more than a minute and a half of the song. Oh, really? Wow. Right. So they'll do the, the one move from the music video and then oh, get out. And yeah. so we have to, now it's like one minute, a minute and a half mixing throughout a, throughout a, 
throughout the party of every song. Right. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah, for the dance sets and everything. Yeah, um, when when we used to do it, like my, my earlier, the clients were like, we want to hear the whole song. Don't cut it out. Yeah, you know, you three and a half minutes a minimum of, of a song, and and we used to really mix. We used to do overlays where you would have a minute and a half intro on a song, and you'd blend that into the what, a song you're playing. And, you know, do a lot of that. And luckily, I still have clients that want that. Yeah. Um, that is really unfortunate, man. Uh, cause I feel like the whole, it's like you said, the whole idea behind going out and dancing is you get to kind of forget about reality for a little bit. Um, but if your phone is right there, I mean, that becomes your reality. So it's kind of, kind of a weird paradox because, uh, it's kind of prohibiting you from really going out and doing that. Um, I'm wondering yeah. what you think a solution would be because I totally agree with you with the whole attention span thing too. Like uh, back in that day, um, people listened to albums. You know what I mean? Like there was a point in time, I wasn't around at this point in time, but you literally had to listen <laughs> to an album. Um, not, to, not to say anything about your age or anything like that. Not that it's a bad thing either. But uh, you had to listen to the whole album, right? But now people can just pick out the songs that they like and they don't have to listen to the whole record the way that it was kind of intended. So I think it is unfortunate. I think there's a lot of positive aspects to the technology today, but I think the attention span is definitely one of the negative things. Do you think it's getting worse or do you think there's a way to make it better? I think it's part of our growth as a, as a humanity where we got this new toy, this new technology. Mm. And think about when you, it was Christmas and you got the toy you wanted and how much you would just play with that nonstop. Right. And then you had your fill of it. And we're starting to see that maybe with Facebook and mm. with some of the social media where people are like, oh, this is too much. I had enough. Right. Um, so, I mean, my solution, which I would love to do, is we're proposing at events that there's like a cell phone locker. So, um, but we want to do an attended one so that if your parent or somebody that you need to talk to is going to call that we know that they're calling and we'll find you totally. like that would be an awesome solution. And we've had clients request to, uh, if there was any way to put in a cell phone blocker at events so that, um, we, uh, so that people are in the moment instead of everything is being Instagrammed and, 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 you know, and, uh, and just videotaped and, and, and filmed and everything. Cause you can't do anything. Everyone's living through, a second, a delay through their right. phones versus yeah. rocking it. I can't, it's, it's crazy when you're seeing people at an event and everyone's on their phones. Yeah, it is a total trip. Uh, it reminds me of a Louis CK joke. Are you familiar with him at all? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hilarious dude. Um, Go ahead. Without the joke, Wes. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> since you asked, um, <laughs> he talks about, uh, when he, when he went to his daughter's ballet recital or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he's sitting there and he's looking around and all of the other parents are filming um, their kids do this ballet performance. And there's no way I'm going to tell this as funny as Louis C.K. did. But uh, he's, he basically just says like, he's like, he's like, I don't know why everybody's watching what's happening in front of them through their phones. Like the resolution of the actual thing happening is amazing. <laughs> way better. <Yeah. laughs> You're seeing it like through the screen. That you're yeah. never going to watch again in the first place. So yeah. totally, totally a trip. Um, I, I think it's going to be really interesting. Uh, I really like what Apple is doing with screen time. What's where, that? I'm not even hip. So in iOS 12, you're going to be able to, for yourself, see how much time you spend using each app and using your device in total. Oh, God. <laughs> and for your kids, if you have a family share set up, you can now limit per app or full use of the device. Um, I think it, it's a great tool for giving us accountability. Like, oh my God, I'm spending right. 16 hours in a day on a you know, clash of clans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it's a really good idea too. Um, um, I think the first step in solving a problem like that is definitely being aware that the problem exists, but Lord have mercy, right? <laughs> no, I mean, but there's a definite cell phone addiction. Totally. Um, but all these devices that are supposed to make our lives easier are, oh, we're heading on a completely different topic. All these, right. all these devices that are supposed to make our lives easier, I find are encumbering our time. 
you know, everyone's saying, oh, you have, uh, you have a smart device, you have email, like, so everything's so much supposed to be so much more convenient. Right. But now we've become work hours are nonstop. Um, yeah. I actually put a clause in our contracts that we will get back to you within reasonable business hours, mm. which means after seven o'clock, six o'clock, I'm not answering emails or checking emails anymore. Yeah. Smart. It's hard to, it's hard to resist the urge too. I feel like when it, when, like when your phone pings to, to not just respond to the email right away, but, turn off uh, notifications. Right. I was going to say that's definitely, um, a good solution. And um, if you have an iPhone, you can set your do not disturb to automatically go on at a certain time. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. iPhone users who are listening. That's the solution. <laughs> I don't think I can do that with my Android, unfortunately, but I definitely also think that too much of a good thing is definitely a bad thing and right. phones are definitely no stranger to that um to kind of bring us back on the topic do you have a crazy story from just any of your uh multiple careers that you've kind of been involved with be it events or yeah. gang or anything you know my crazy threshold is super high <laughs> so i I don't know. I mean, I don't have anything that I would say was, was crazy. I mean, if you're say I was DJing at a club in New York and everyone was up in the VIP booth and stuff like that, that, that for me is all normal. I mean, I've done crazy stuff DJing where uh, we did something for a uh, very, very VIP, someone, a VIP's wife. And we did a week worth of events for, for her because she wasn't allowed into a nightclub. Wow. Um, I think she was too young or they just didn't want to let her in. Okay. And so she, for a week, we did events for her and her entourage. But it was really for her because her entourage were all her staff. And we were on a yacht going around New York. And every time her phone rang, we had to stop everything. Why? The mute because of who she like was. So important that she had to. When her phone rang, her person was like, "Turn the music off." Every time if she her phone rang, so every time they gave me the signal of her phone rang, the music stopped. Everyone stopped talking until she hung up. Oh my god! She was just like a total diva. It it was it was she was a uh, somewhat royal like. I don't like. I don't ever like. Yeah, I don't ever like saying who's who because that's kind of why I get some of my clients. Uh, I kind of want to know, and I can totally bleep it out. But if you don't want to say, I'll. I'll tell you offline. Okay. But and then like every time it was like crazy parties. But and no matter what we did, if her phone rang, the music had to stop. That is wild. <laughs> yep. Uh, that was normal. a pretty crazy thing. Because I picture just a normal person in that scenario like if that's me i'm like covering my other ear like yelling into the phone while the music's mm -hmm. playing uh but to be i guess at that level of status that everything has to kind of cease until you're done with what you're doing um it's a pretty wild experience i don't know yeah. if i would want that kind of special treatment to be honest i i think at that level i think she was just used to it and accepted it i mean that was what she expected right. um, that was pretty crazy um, that is, that is pretty wild, man. Um, but just like the, the total ability to just, um, I guess, I guess have everybody else kind of succumb to what you're doing and not really care, uh, is, is kind of a trip for me. But, yeah. I mean, I don't think, uh, as, as, as the, our normal day to day lifestyle, we encounter people like that, mm, but I think there's a like huge empathy and stuff like that. I don't, I don't, you know, it's just I, numb to the rest of it. I don't know if it's a, even a lack of empathy. It's just what, if you were raised in that and that's what, how you were brought up, mm -hmm. you just expect it. Yeah. I and, see. and, you know, I had no problem with it. I mean, for me, it didn't matter, but right. it was just, I mean, that's your client. So yeah, it was just stupefying. It was like, whoa. <laughs> what um, if it happened like right before the drop? Like you'd still, still cut the music, just total anticlimactic. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't, not, it, it, it didn't, I, cause you know, another thing is if she wasn't dancing, nobody was dancing. And oh, if she decided to dance, everybody would like, everyone was dancing. This is wild. I can't imagine being a guest at an event like this. It, no, it wasn't guests. It was her and her entourage. I would, uh, I guess I was thinking about them as like, quote unquote guests, but, um, but so, cause I guess yeah, no, for, it, for it her, was, guess it was not. incredible. And it was incredible to be, that was something incredible 
you know, this is this was also a little bit before you. There was like all the billionaires and every like kind of the media that we see in the past five years. Mm. Um, this was about uh, maybe I'd say ten years ago, or 15, 12 years ago. So it was really like to see that kind of power at that time was was a little crazy. And I had been to Monte Carlo. I'd been to all these you know places where there was really wealthy people, but this was on another level. Yeah, totally. And when I tell you offline who it was, <laughs> you'll be like, ah, oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Yeah. I swear to secrecy as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of, I guess, say 12, 12 plus years ago, um, I was kind of Were curious. you born West 12 years, 12 years ago? <laughs> I'm 13 years old, <laughs> actually. So I was. <laughs> <laughs> no, 12 years ago, I was uh, 12 years old. So I guess that would be the halfway point of, of my life to date, which is pretty weird to think about. <laughs> um, what, uh, I guess, aside from the whole phone thing, um, in terms of just like DJing or any, anything in the entertainment industry, have you noticed a lot of changes and are they kind of negative or positive or kind of a blend of both? So I come from the school of, it doesn't matter what tool you're using. It's the end product that counts. Okay. So, um, okay. I started vinyl, you know, I, that was what we had. And, and when the, uh, CDs came out, I, I, I use CDs and anything to, because I was always mobile. I was always going around even on the clubs. Um, so when we, I didn't have to carry crates around and, and we, you know, we brought sound systems too, and I didn't have to carry all these amps and everything because now they, the speakers have uh, amps built in and everything got lighter. Mm -hmm. I love it. And now that I can walk into a place with my laptop um, and that's it. And then even, and even if I'm just doing a set, a lot of the new, Systems you can just put a thumb drive in. Mm, true. Um, I think that's awesome. Totally. There is something that I don't like so much about using a laptop is that I find that my nose is more on the laptop and less on the dance floor. And, mm. and, and looking, I remember back in the day, you know, you would look more at the dance floor, and I'm kind of retraining myself to look less at the computer and really be engaged uh, with the crowd. Um, and I've, I've watched other DJs too, where their head is in there. What am I playing next? And going through their, their, their list, because when you're doing a private event, you can't as much pull your playlist as if you were doing a club, right? Um, a club I can go, I'm going to, this is my set. Um, and i never did that in clubs either. I went based on what was going on. I think that's the way <laughs> to do it for sure. You got to read the crowd because every crowd is yeah. different. Um, yeah. I'm surprised to hear that actually, because uh i've never spun vinyl before but to the best of my knowledge the way you kind of have cue points is you have like a little sticker on the top or something like some sort of tape. marker yeah right? tape tape right and then uh so when you still have to look down to see where those points are or where the tape is on the record that's it and then you look up you know you might load your other your other record and then beat match but you're you were much more just your hands you were just more feeling things versus looking at the screen because now in like Serato, for example, or even tractor for that matter, there's a, um, there's a bar that shows you when the tempo aligns. So you're mm -hmm. kind of looking at that. You're kind of looking at, at this. You're, you're kind of, wave you can't, and everything. yeah. And, and that, cause it's so enticing. <laughs> um, <laughs> pretty colors. Yeah. Uh, so I, I've, I've really been breaking away from that um, just to be more in touch and it, and it does affect how the crowd reacts with you and you never know that you know some cool people might be giving you a thumbs up you want to keep your eyes on them yeah totally get the clout um yeah. that's great advice for any dj listening i think and it kind of reminds me of the whole phone thing too because um like you said the phones were meant to be for our convenience and kind of meant to be this all positive thing so uh do you think there's a point where the technology is going to become I guess, too in depth, like if you're looking at the screen and, it, and there's too much going on and it almost has too many features that it does kind of take away from your crowd engagement because you find yourself staring at the screen so much. Or do you think we're already there? We're already there because uh, even in Serato, you can turn on your effects, you can turn on your sampler, you can turn on all this stuff. Um, it's really training yourself. I, to be honest, I, I barely use effects and I barely use all that stuff. I, I'm, I'm really a purist. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to my to my mixing, um, you know, to each his own. As long as you're moving the crowd, whatever works. You know, what I think at the end of the day, as long as you feel like I had fun and people had fun, that's all totally. that really matters. 
Yeah, yeah. Because at the end of the day, that's why you're really doing it, right? Because it's fun. You like being there. You know, I, I, I love that the majority of my life has been making people happy. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's my business's catch line, making people happy since 1994. <laughs> so I, I, really cool. that's, that's, that's the most awesome part. When you, I, like this weekend when I saw that crowd was just drenched and had a blast. And that when they did ask me, the beauty of computers and the internet today is that even if I don't have something, if somebody asks, asks me for it, I can get it instantly, mm, that's true. Um, more or less. And that I was able to you know, make the request work. And this one drunk guy was like, mix this into this because the, 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 uh, the new Drake song uses the, uh, uses, uh, what's the name, uh, from the Fugees. Oh, um, uh, which song? Are you thinking about the, the Kiki song? It wasn't the Kiki song. It was uh, uh, there for me, there for me. I know you're there for me. And then I think Drake used that in one of his latest songs. I have yeah, it in my, I can't, in my. I can't think of which one it is either. And I had to just really play with, like, I it wasn't a big deal, but the fact that I was able to make that work, <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> but the, when you can make people happy with their requests and everything, that, that's an awesome part. Totally. That's a really personable experience too, that that person had with you. And that's just going to contribute to the fact that they're never going to forget the event. Yeah. He was, so, he was so happy because a lot of people think they know the perfect mix and whatnot. And, and I'm like, all right, let's try it. Let's go for it. It's, it's really not about the DJ so much as it is about the people listening to the DJ, I feel like. And that's something that often gets overlooked. I feel like. If a DJ plays in the woods, in the club and nobody's there to listen, is he really <laughs> playing? Who knows? The world will never know. That's right. Um, I feel like a whole theme of this whole episode is kind of like go with the flow. Like the fact that you've kind of taken all these different avenues in your career and just in your life. Um, and the fact that you're adapting to technology and then kind of learning how to um, kind of not take it to a level where it starts to inhibit things. Um, do you have any do you have any parting words or anything that you'd like to share? Oh man, parting word for life is go with the flow. You know, Taoism. adapt, always, always adapt and mold to what things, the universe is going to be a big wave coming at you and you can either ride it or you can get knocked over by it. That's how I live. Boom. That's a great, great series of parting words. Um, I have one last question that I ask on every, th- every single show. I think you know what it is if you've heard a couple episodes, but if you had unlimited money, no strings attached, what were you doing? Why? I did hear that on the, on one of your podcasts. Um, if I had unlimited money, I would. I thought I had the answer when I listened to this last time. <laughs> kind of put you on the spot. You know, if if I really had unlimited money right now, I get a nice size boat, <laughs> <laughs> and I would take my wife and my son, and I would travel the world first. Um, I think uh, traveling and seeing other cultures and, and realizing what the rest of the world is like opens your mind and just creates such rich openings and memories and, and life. And then after that, I'd probably work with Apple to devise a global education system where um, everyone would have access to education and anything they wanted um, through, techno- through the technology we have today. Yeah, I love it. Sharon, thank you for joining me. On- Thanks, Wes. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of The Music Journal. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you got a lot out of it. If you want to know more about me and what I do, I just put out a personal EP on Spotify. You can go to bit.ly slash Spotify. And if you want to know more about music production, I teach an online course about it too. Just shoot an email to Wes at homestudiohits.com and I'll send you an application. Just for filling out the application, I'll send you a free sample pack of sounds I use to make the instrumental you're listening to and more. All these links will be available in the show notes so you can check them out there. And while you're there, if you feel inclined to rate this show five stars, that would really help me out. Other than that, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Thanks again. Peace.